There is a lot to do at the start of a new season in Call of Dragons, and so in this video, I want to review the top six mistakes that players make when they just get into a brand new season. So whether you're playing a season already and you're preparing for the future, or you're just starting a new season right now, this video could help you a whole heck of a lot. Hello my friends and welcome back, I'm Chisco Gaming, and today's video is sponsored by the makers of Call of Dragons. And we started a brand new season just over 24 hours ago. We're a day in, so this is very fresh for me as we start season two, the Icebound Oath, and it's our first time doing this season two format. So I'm gonna review six things that really surfaced for me as I was starting all over again in a new season, figuring out, hey, wait a minute, these are mistakes that other people probably are making, and we should talk about it. So let's jump right into the very first mistake, which is that you ab absolutely should be spending your CP. But the mistake is, in my opinion, to spend a bunch of your CP recovery items. Now, look, a part of this will depend on how far you push in the Dragon Trail, and I'm not saying that using your CP recovery items at the very start of a season is necessarily bad if you're able to translate that into more levels on the Dragon Trail. But the reason that I like to hold on to CP recovery items is that very quickly you will get higher and higher level Darklings. And those higher level Darklings bring tons more experience. So if you want to know when you're going to get higher level Darklings to show up in your season... You can scroll all the way over to the highest level Darkling available to you and then click the little locked button where the plus button once was. You see how it's a plus button and once you get to the highest level, it's locked? It's telling me here that higher Dwarven Soldiers, uh, we're in Season 2, we have Dwarven Soldiers, not Darklings. These Dwarven Soldiers will be unlocked in 21 hours. So at reset, I get higher level Darklings. And look how much more experience I get per Darkling. Here it's 2,300 for a level 11, and here it's 2,000 for a level 10. So you always want to battle the highest level Darklings possible, and what I like to do is save all my CP potions for when we're about to have a big fight, then I'll pop those potions, get experience off the highest level Darklings possible, and use that to get, you know, more experience per CP that I spend. Now, the other reason that I think it's really important to ideally wait a little bit before you go in and start blasting through your CP items is that you have several ways to enhance your experience game. One is going to come from your policies. Here you can see I've got 3.5% extra hero experience. Over here, I've got another 3% hero experience. That's pretty good. If I was battling dark creatures, which we'll talk about in a minute, I could get extra artifact uh, dust as well. In addition, you have alliance technology that can enhance the amount of experience that you gain. So it's pretty important, in my opinion, to hold back a little bit until some of these things get cranked up a bit. And all in all, I'll have at least, well, I already have 10% more experience. That's pretty good, okay? Oh, and by the way, in addition, one other way that you could theoretically get more experience, right, is you could start to collect villages. So once you start getting villages, that will give you more hero experience. That's pretty legit, right? So there's a bunch of ways that you can get more hero experience. I think you should pump the brakes. Don't use your CP potions too soon, but you should collect as many of those as you can. And don't hoard them forever. Burn them once you're about to have a fight. Now, the question then becomes, where should you be spending your CP? And this leads to mistake number two. You see these dark creatures? I do not think you want to spend CP on these. Why is that? There's actually several reasons why I think dark creatures are a bad choice. I think summoning Elianas is a bad choice. The thing that gives you the most punch at the start of a new season is leveling up your heroes. Leveling up your heroes means that you get more troops and you get talent points and you unlock more skills. So that means that hands down, the best thing to do is the Darkling uh, patrols. In this case, we've got Dwarven patrols in season two. Not the dark creatures, not Eliana's. Don't fight war pets. You want to capture them, but you don't want to fight them. Um, I think the best bet here 
is to just straight up go for these guys, okay? The patrols, they give experience. This is the way, all right? Um, again, troop capacity, talents, skill unlocks. When you're about to have a big fight and you're blasting through a bunch of the CP uh, potions that I was talking about, the CP recovery items, then I think it makes sense to go battle some dark creatures, get some dust, and put some of that into your artifacts. That's when I go. And I'm like, all right, time to level up the artifacts a bit. And hey, don't get me wrong. You definitely can get punch on these artifacts. I've been spending, which is why I've you know been able to take this guy to level 30 as an example. So I definitely understand the value of artifacts. I just think that it is a secondary objective compared to just getting the levels, which brings all those other goodies. Now, with that said, let's go to mistake number three. Leveling either too many heroes or too few heroes. And I think the sweet spot is as many as five complete pairs of heroes, ideally utilizing every single one of your troop types so that you can fight and actually get value from all of the different troop types that you have at your disposal. So I have one infantry combo, one uh, mage combo. I'm actually using two marksman combos, and I've got a cavalry combo that lets me use my flying eagles and also um, my special unit over here, the elk riders at the stable is my cavalry unit, okay? So I have combinations that let me take advantage of all my troop types. I think there's a lot of reasons why that's good to do. Besides the fact that when you fight, you can actually use all your stuff. The other reason that's really powerful is that when you go to do the dragon trail, you're going to need multiple combos of troops. So you may as well start on that right away so that you've got multiple troops ready to go. My recommendation is that, you know, look at the start of the season, you have to do a level one before you can do a level two, before you can do a level three and so on. So I just use the least number of marches possible to destroy the early level darklings. I get to the highest level darkling, which on day one is a level 10. And then I bring out all my troops and I swarm down the level 10s. That is the way that I ran it. And I'm actually very happy with how that went. Again, if you want to push more in, you know, the um, Dragon Trail, it's understandable if you want to spend some of the CP and if you need to do that to get your levels, you can do it. But don't just, like, spend your CP willy-nilly, okay? Let's go now to mistake number four. And that is simply not pushing in the Dragon Trail. Like, look, I I've already made it to level 71. I'm not as high as I was ranked earlier in the day, but like 208 stars is a long way. Now, I have tier fives, so yeah, I have a lot of opportunity to do that. However, no matter what power you're at, every day you should try to go further in the dragon trail until you've completed it. Now, there are things you can do to improve your ability to push in the dragon trail. Um, one of those things, as I was describing with leveling up heroes, is that when you get to level 20, you can start to bring a secondary hero. We'll talk more about this in just a minute. But my strong recommendation is that you push as far as you can in the Dragon Trail. Pushing in the Dragon Trail has a very, uh, I would say, sort of dependent relationship on your policies. So by pushing in the Dragon Trail, you get prestige. You use the prestige to then get policies. And the policy you want to hunt for, if you want to push further in the Dragon Trail, is more March expansion. So I maxed the first military expansion. I took the second military uh, expansion to 10 out of 15. I can't go any further till I get some of this other econo uh, economy stuff. And I even went all the way over here. I took this one to five out of 20. And I'll put more levels onto this one as well, which by the way, has the added benefit of eventually getting me to administrative excellence where I can catch more pets. All that to say, there's a sort of synergistic relationship between pushing and dragon trail, getting more punching power, because you got more punching power from military expansion, now you can push further in the Dragon Trail. So you really need to push on that relationship and balance of these things at the start of the season a lot. Now look, you can only get as far as I did by gemming here, okay? And you don't have to gem in order to progress, but just make sure that you have research running at all times if you're not spending gems, okay? Now, mistake number five is that as you push in the Dragon Trail, you will notice that you start to accumulate experience tomes. Those experience tomes come from beating missions, but also in the loot in the center, you will periodically accumulate experience. Where should this experience be going? What should you be doing? What I did 
is I use my natural CP to go and get to somewhere in the realm of, I want to say like level 12 or 14. And then I used my experience tomes to take my primary heroes to level 20. Now, not only did that unlock an additional skill, but it also went in and made it so I could bring a secondary hero, which gave me huge dragon trail progress. So in a perfect world, and I think this is only something a tier five can do, you take all your marches that you're using in the dragon trail for the primary hero, take them to 20. And then boom, you can bring secondary heroes. Now, look, if you can't do all your heroes, go one hero at a time. Most people can't do all their heroes on day one. One hero at a time, you take them to 20 with experience tomes, and then you can push further in the dragon trail, which gives you more march size, which means you push further in the dragon's trail. You get the idea, okay? The other place where experience tomes should go pretty early on is actually on your gathering heroes. This is so weird, but it's like 500 experience to get Earth's Grace to level three, and this can get you 12,000 experience per day on your gatherer, which is amazing. Then you want to get the next gathering skill to five as well. Um, this this is Earth's Grace 2, I guess. What is this? Uh, Earth's Grace 1, the second Earth's Grace. 20,000 experience per day. Let's go, man. So I'm getting a bunch of experience for free. All I used experience tomes for was just getting this to three out of three. Then I got really far for free. Then I've spent a little bit over here and... Now, now I'm cruising, and I'll apply some of these talent points later on. But my gatherers are doing their thing, and they're starting to get those levels, which is exactly what I'm looking for, all right? So feeling very good about that, and strongly recommend that you spend that small amount of experience onto your gatherers. Now, I think that's better than trying to fight with them, because they're really not that great at fighting. You can just go kill some Darklings with them, but I think you're better off using your actual combat heroes fighting the Darklings and using some small, small, small amount of your experience tomes from the Dragon Trail, leveling up your gathering heroes so that they can level themselves up. Big win. The final piece of guidance I want to give you going into a new season, a big mistake, is to not have an alliance before the season starts. I know a lot of people do this, and they like kind of just pick a zone and they just roll with it, and I appreciate that, but I think you will find that when you seek out a group that really fits your play style, you can have a lot more fun playing this game. And 10 out of 10 can recommend being with a really fun group. Um, so my recommendation would be to try to get into an alliance before the season starts so that you know what zone to go into and you don't end up having to resurge, which is going to cost you a lot of your prestige. So you don't want to have to do that. Now, if you've never had to research before to switch zones, good news. I've got you covered. I'll have a card in the end screen in just a second that covers that. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, consider doing so. This is going to be a really fun and crazy season. I think there's going to be a lot of fighting. So subscribe if you haven't already. And last but not least, if you want to see um, all of the events and things that happen at the very start of the season, I made a dedicated video about that. Card will be in the end screen for that one as well, and I hope you'll check it out.